Hello, Valley Park. It's Tim Dilge, Superintendent. I want to take a moment to thank you for your flexibility, your patience, your grace, and your understanding throughout the pandemic. Your commitment to health and wellness and your willingness to work together with us through the pandemic's uncertainty and challenges have been paramount to our student success the last three school years. I know this pandemic has challenged us all in many different ways, and I sincerely appreciate your partnership during these trying and unprecedented times. An increased sense of hope is more and more evident each day as COVID-19 transmission numbers and positivity rates continue to stabilize and decrease in St. Louis County. News that COVID-19 vaccinations will soon become readily available to our younger students ages 5 to 11 is cause for even more optimism. While we should certainly look forward to better days ahead, it's also important to temper our excitement and remain disciplined in our approach to mitigating COVID-19. Unfortunately, multiple times over the past three school years, this virus has proven difficult to stop and its resurgence and its variants have delayed the lifting of restrictions and made us pause our plans and our progress. In preparing for the 21-22 school year, we developed multiple layers of mitigation strategies in our return to learn plan to protect our students and our staff's health and safety and limit disruptions to in-person learning as much as possible. Our goal as a district is to limit quarantines and transmission of COVID-19 and offer in-person instruction five days a week. And so far, our strategies are proving highly successful. In addition to consistently educating students five days a week, in person, face to face, we are proud to celebrate that we have offered many of our extracurricular activities and athletics this year, while still prioritizing health, wellness, and safety. The mitigation practices and protocols we have implemented are developed with guidance provided by the CDC and St. Louis County Department of Health. Thanks in part to our protocols and your partnership, our sports team competed in all fall athletics. That includes softball, volleyball, cross country, and boys soccer. Our theater department proudly presented The Little Mermaid this past week and our other student clubs and activities like Student Council, FBLA, Yearbook, Chess, Minecraft, Chick-fil-A Leadership Academy, Anime Club, and Library Club have consistently met throughout the school year. We also have hosted outdoor events for our early childhood program, have plans for an outdoor Veterans Day assembly, and earlier this fall proudly hosted the district softball championship right here in Valley Park. In the last two weeks, our students have enjoyed a fall pep rally and our seniors went on a trip to the Botanical Gardens together. This winter and spring, we are all looking forward to competing in all the Misha athletic events that our students and community have come to expect and enjoy. While things are not fully back to pre-pandemic conditions, we are successfully and safely providing opportunities for our students to meet their social, emotional, physical, and academic needs. While there have been many celebrations, there have also been frustrations and disappointments. The high school haunted house that had been put on for six years was unable to happen for the second consecutive year. In September, St. Louis County shared that COVID incident rates were highest amongst 10 to 19 year olds. When approving events, we must always consider the risk involved and the mitigation layers we can confidently put in place to keep our students and our communities safe. The confined indoor settings, the still low vaccination rates of 12 to 18 year olds in St. Louis County, and the substantial seven day COVID case rate all combine to make us feel really uncomfortable hosting the haunted house this fall. Still, our high school administration district leadership, and Board of Education recognize the value that social events add to a school community and student experience. 
In wanting to provide our students with lots of opportunities, our high school administration suggested an outdoor haunted house, a trunk or treat, or a fall dance outdoors for our Valley Park students without guests. The outdoor fall dance proposal was similar to what many local districts offer their students this fall due to some of the positivity and transmission rates, low vaccination rates, and risk mentioned previously. Unfortunately, the high school students wanting to either hold the indoor haunted house or invite guests to the fall dance did not accept the administration's proposal. Moving forward, however, the high school leadership has offered our students multiple dance opportunities this school year. They have offered to host a traditional homecoming on Saturday, December 18th, indoors with mask and allow our students to bring guests from other schools if they choose. The administration feels comfortable offering this opportunity to students because if there were to be an outbreak or students were to contract the coronavirus, we have a quarantine period built in our calendar with winter break occurring right after this dance. This means that the quarantine period would significantly minimize our students to have to miss learning, and it would also reduce the likelihood of them transmitting the virus to their peer groups during a school setting. December 18th is during basketball season, just like all of our traditional homecomings have always been, and we have a boys and a girls basketball game scheduled for the Friday night before the dance. Other than the dance being held in December instead of February, it would look and feel much like homecoming of years past. This reasoning, combined with the spaciousness of our gym and now improving transmission rates and stabilizing positivity rates, gives us a lot of confidence that we can safely offer this opportunity to our students while still prioritizing their health and prioritizing in-person learning. Looking ahead to the spring, the high school leadership has also offered that students could hold a spring dance before spring break. Strategically using our calendar once again provides that built-in quarantine period, that extra layer of mitigation that has been selected to prioritize our students and staff's health and wellness and keep our students in school with minimal disruption. Finally, the high school administration is committed to holding a prom in the spring of 2022, provided the conditions allow. No date has been set, no venue selected at this point. It is certainly possible that students could choose the March date before spring break to hold prom then if that's what they wanted to do. I will also acknowledge that the idea of holding a prom after graduation has indeed been considered. The thinking behind that was the desire to ensure that every senior has an opportunity to attend graduation and not be excluded because of quarantine. We recognize that this is not an ideal situation. And of course, we would love to hold a prom two, three or more weeks before graduation, provided that positivity and transmission rates continue to decline and vaccination rates continue to increase as we get closer to spring. However, if there's one thing this pandemic has taught us, it's not to plan too far in advance. While transmission rates are currently decreasing and are trending in the right direction, they're still very high for students age 19 and under. Also, students age 19 and under have the lowest vaccination rates of any age band in St. Louis County. And we have also heard concerns from St. Louis County that as the flu and holiday season approaches, and more people attend indoor social events, that positivity rates and transmission rates could once again increase. Unfortunately, there's no way we can predict the elusiveness of this virus. If things continue to stabilize and improve, that gives us great confidence that we can loosen our restrictions. But if things should turn worse as they have previously, we may have to become more restrictive once again. I recognize that decisions made throughout this pandemic have been frustrating and disappointing at times. And I'll be the first to admit that our response to the pandemic has not been for perfect. Admittedly, as we have navigated this pandemic, we have done so cautiously 
and I've done so being overly concerned about making a mistake that would jeopardize the health and wellness of our students, our staff, and our community. However, our mitigation practices and approaches have been designed and implemented to prioritize health and wellness and keep all of us safe. They are proven safe, sustainable, and successful. As positivity rates and transmission rates decrease, we will modify and adjust our approach and mitigation practices as we have throughout the pandemic in agreement with St. Louis County and CDC guidelines. I thank you for your support and your understanding. And as the holiday season approaches, I wanna wish you all health and happiness. Go Hawks.